14 year old blue run bourbon blended by legendary Jim Rutledge bottle designed by Nike's Devin McKinney who actually designed the Air Force One sneaker line recently kicked ass at the San Francisco Spirit Awards but 250 bucks let's find out if it's worth it on the mash and drum What's up folks, I'm Jason C from The Master and Drum and today we're reviewing the latest release by Blue Run, a company founded by a diverse crowd from tech to marketing and politics on a mission to craft an exceptional bourbon. So with the help of industry legend Jim Rutledge given the title of Liquid Advisor, helping them with their barrel selections and blending some of those barrels, Blue Run was born. The first release was a 13 year old small batch, followed by a few 13 and a half year old single barrels and now this one, the 14 year small batch summer release. So Blue Run Spirits was founded in 2019 by a Nike designer, the first director level employee at Facebook, a hospitality executive, a political advisor, and a philanthropist, which in turn is backed by a team of advisors, including Nike marketing experts, the Campari communications veteran behind the US launch of Espelon Tequila and the Aperol Spritz, a former vice president of innovation from Brown Foreman, a former spirits distributor, and others with deep industry experience. But with all that experience and marketing street cred involved, you have to craft good bourbon, ultimately. So they turned to Jim Rutledge, former master distiller at Four Roses, and like I said, pretty much an industry legend. Now the first release from Blue Run and Jim Rutledge was a sourced 13 year old small batch offering that is set to feature all the hallmarks of a Jim Rutledge whiskey. Exceptionally smooth and mellow with a long, sweet and dry finish, little to no burn on the back end. Remember that description. It was bottled at 113 proof, which is stronger than many other extra aged bourbons because as Rutledge spells it out in a prepared statement, it provides more flavor because less water is added to reduce proof. While the proof is almost as high as a barrel strength bourbon, its smoothness could be compared to bourbons with proofs 10 to 20 points lower. Now, Blue Run Spirits also sports this beautiful bottle designed by Nike's Devin McKinney. As they explain, uh, the bourbon is housed in a modern looking bottle because the weighty hand numbered bottle is perfectly proportioned, featuring the brand's signature gold butterfly medallion, which symbolizes the metamorphosis of the bourbon industry as it reaches a broader audience, which appreciates fine bourbon through Blue Run. Ah, it's a lot of marketing. So, so does it sound a little too marketing gimmicky for you because it is. Uh, if you go to their website, and I wish I didn't read the website before I made this video, uh, you see statements like a new era of bourbon has begun, steeped in heritage, impeccably crafted, aged to perfection. This is the future of bourbon. Now this is about the maybe third or fourth company I've heard say this is the future of bourbon. Please stop. <laughs> Whoever's doing that, please stop. If you can't explain what the future of bourbon is, then just please just stop saying it. Honestly, to me, you can't be the future of bourbon when you are sourcing barrels. What happens when that runs out? Now, the rumor has it they have laid down new make with Castle and Key and Bardstown Bourbon Company. But if you want more of this 13, 14 year old stuff, it's certainly not the future of bourbon, not even the near future. Some of the marketing for source brands have decent stories or are built around a historical figure, but this this kind of falls in line with just some marketing nonsense and a marketing trend of certain, you know, certain brands that I, uh, I just can't stand it. So they also say this statement, it says a new legend in the making. We wouldn't be here without the distillers of yore who dedicated their lives to the art of whiskey, but it's time to push the dusty labels aside and make room on the top shelf for bourbon's new pioneers. It goes on to say our super premium batches and infusions, marry modern flavor with the same master craftsmanship shared by the greats. Okay, so you want us to enjoy your bourbon shared among the greats, but you also want us to leave the dusty labels aside, put it on the top shelf, and you're uh, apparently a pioneer. You didn't distill anything. They also say Blue Run is steeped in more than two centuries of distilling history. 
And now it's where bourbon is being reborn. H how? Because you're putting it in a fancy bottle with a high price tag? See, I see right through this shit. I can't stand it. Unfortunately, I don't know if a lot of, you know, casual bourbon drinkers see it as well. Like I said, I wish I didn't read the, the website before I did this review because it really just kind of pissed me off. All right, let's get into the bottle. Blue Run Spirits, latest award-winning offering, this new 14-year-old small batch bourbon. It won best small batch bourbon 11 years and older at the 2021 San Francisco World Spirits Competition, along with a double gold medal. Now this Blue Run 14-year-old small batch bourbon uh, reserved is bottled at 113 proof, was available online only for 250 bucks, the source is undisclosed, but rumored to be from Barton. Uh, Blue Run has a number of new and exciting whiskeys coming soon, including its first rye in early September and a high rye bourbon uh, that's gonna be available in October. All right, so let's go to the nose on this one and see what we get here. So the nose on this has gotten incredibly better since I first opened it up. Get a little air in there. This has been sitting in the glass for a little while. It's extremely sweet on the nose, a lot sweeter than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, notes of like super sweet cotton candy, some rich caramels, a lot of sweet oak. You get a really nice sweet oak flavor. Man, powdered sugar, a little bit of maple candy in there as well too. There's a little bit of a, of a pepperiness going on as well. Now, if it's sourced from Barton, when I first try this, I'm like, man, is this Barton or is this, uh, you know, Sazerac owns Barton and Sazerac also owns Buffalo Trace, but this was coming off the nose for me like a Buffalo Trace uh, whiskey. So, not sure if they're in cahoots, but, <laughs> but you know, the rumor is Barton, but I don't know, it, it definitely smells Buffalo Tracey on the nose with it being so sweet forward. And one of the, kind of the, uh, the like the, just, I'll use my word, the quintessential notes that I always get from a Jim Rutledge wh whiskey. I always get a lot of like either peach or apricot coming off the nose, and I definitely get in here too. But it's really just kind of underlying all over the, the cotton candy, the, the really like heavy sweetness really kind of overlays the whole experience here. But it's a great nose. It's very inviting, candy, candy sweet. All right, let's try it, here we go. Mmm. I mean, it's good. Again, more of the maple comes out. More of that cotton candy. Again, the powdered sugar, very, very sweet up front. It's got some, it's got a little bit of depth to it. Definitely some spice, which definitely makes you think now, makes me think at least it's a little bit more on the Barton side. You know, Barton usually has that nice 18% uh, mash bill, 80% rye in the mash bill. Not sure if they use that mash bill or not, but it definitely has some nice spice that lingers on. And the finish, the finish is a little bit drying. Uh, the first sip, let's go for another sip here. Man, second sip. The whole experience just kind of went a little flat. That big burst of sweetness I was getting up front doesn't really come back. It stays, I wanna say it's muted, but I'm, I'm like looking for more of, of the, the flavor punch I was getting, like all that sweetness and all the candy and the apricot, like I want that on the, on the palate. And it's there, I mean, there's some definite, a lot of sweetness. I'm getting more of the sweet oak than anything. Really beautiful sweet oak notes here. Uh, you could tell that, you know, they, they age really well. I mean, no, like over, for a 14 year bourbon, you know, this, this drinks like it could be, you know, 11, you know, nine, 10, 11 year. I mean, you wouldn't think it's 14, it's really sweet, which is indicative too of also some Buffalo Trace barrels. So, all right, let's go for another sip. Yeah, maybe the slightest hint to like a little pop of cherry, maybe like cherry cotton candy on the back end. Again, the, the finish is, it lingers on. It's not too short. I would say it's like medium, but there's really not a lot of burn on the back end here. It drinks very easy. Yeah, if you go back to what I said before about Jim Rutledge saying is how it's exceptionally smooth, it's mellow, you know, barely any burn on the back end. I think that's what he crafted here. It's, it's almost too mellow for me. There's just not a lot going on. There's not a ton of depth here. 
The more I sip it, the more uninteresting it's getting. You know, and when I'm, you know, I keep sipping this thing and yeah, it's sweet. It's really easy to drink and sip and that's fine. But man, I just, I want more flavor out of it. I, you know, and maybe, you know, the guys that started Blue Run, maybe that's what they're into. They're into a very easy sipping whiskey. It's a lot what we see, you know, in, in newer drinkers coming onto the scene. You know, guys that want to be able to drink this stuff, want to be able to handle it, have no burn whatsoever. It drinks really easy and you could sip on it, you know, on and on and on without really any sort of uh, a finish or anything. And I mean, if that's what they were going for, I think Jim Rutledge kind of nailed it because... It is, I mean, it is sweet as candy, little bit of fruit, little cherry pop, barely any finish at all. I mean, this is, this is exactly what he described. All right, let me take one more sip. We'll go through the whole experience, then we'll go to the final breakdown. Cheers. So front of the palate, you do get a little bit of a spice there as it, it kind of, I held it on the front of my tongue. A Little bit of tingliness there, so there is some spice. Uh, as soon as it hits, you know, front, mid palate, you get all the candy, that really sweet, like powdered sugar note, um, like cotton candy, little, maybe like cherry cotton candy. It does have a, like a maple brown sugar thing going on. Then as it works its way back, there is a nice pepperiness to it. It stays peppery, which I do appreciate. I love the peppery spice of it. Um, but really overall, it's almost too mellowed out for me. Uh, the nose, I think, is the best thing about the whiskey. I can nose that bourbon all day. It's got some great layers of flavor to it. Man, uh, let me think about this. Uh, let's go to the final breakdown on this one. All right, so for final breakdown, let's start with the price. It was $250 retail. Uh, secondary market value, I've seen these for about $300 to $350 online for, uh, for this bottle in particular. Uh, availability availability is, was, was pretty limited on this, very limited. Uh, this was an online release only. It's pretty much gone. Uh, you know, this particular batch, I'm not sure if any stores got it. If, if someone did get it in the store, please let me know down in the comments. But as far as I know, it was a uh, online release only. Uh, value for this. Um, value for this bottle for me is low. I think it's a low value bottle just because of the price point. Uh, 14 years old, $250. I, I do not like the price point on this especially compared, now if it is sourced from Barton, there's a lot of other bottles that are also sourced from Barton on the market that are, you know, probably 100 to a little over $100 cheaper than this one. So I would say the value on this one is pretty low. What's the most I would pay? To me, this is a $140, $150 bourbon. To say the least, I don't think this is a $250 bourbon at all. Again, I'm comparing to stuff that I have, stuff that I've tasted, uh, what's available on the market. And it's just, you know, this isn't a $250 bourbon to me at all. All right, is this a recommend? <laughs> For me, this is tough. Uh, the bourbon is balanced. It's well-crafted. It's blended well by one of the best names in the industry. I love, you know, even some of the old Four Roses stuff that I've tried from, that I've had the pleasure of trying that Jim Rutledge crafted was amazing stuff. Now, remember what I said earlier, hallmarks of a Rutledge whiskey. Exceptionally smooth, mellow, long, sweet, dry finish, little to no burn on the back end. That's exactly what this is, and to me, it's not a $250 bourbon by any means. Sam Houston 15, Calumet 15, and even another brand called Cream of Kentucky that Rutledge helped bring back, all rumored to be sourced by Barton, and are all cheaper. So what exactly am I paying so much more money for? The future of bourbon that's supposedly steeped in all this heritage, uh, putting it in a sleek Nike design bottle, using a lifestyle millennial marketing playbook to build your brand on Instagram, overcharging customers and being non-transparent. Now, as, as I mentioned, I wish I didn't see the website before reviewing this because it kind of pissed me off, as you could see. Uh, but with all that aside, Jim Rutledge picked, blended a delicious bourbon here that hits a lot of flavors that I think hits on what many drinkers look for. Candy sweet, you got sweet oak, you got, it's mellow, not a long finish. It has a little spice to it. It's also a little drying, but in my opinion, this is not a $250 bourbon by any means. The Russell Reserve 13, a couple of the old Carters and the Blue Note 17 that I've 
already reviewed this year are way better than this is. So I would say if you could try this before you buy it, please do. Uh, don't spend a ton of money on secondary trying to get this bottle. But there are other alternatives out there rather than spending the money on a ton of useless marketing terms and a brand built on a self-proclaimed title as the future of bourbon. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, brutally honest review for, <laughs> for Blue Run 14 uh, Small Batch, the summer release. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of this one. Uh, does this hit your... I would imagine this bourbon does hit a lot of people's profiles that they really like. I just think for the price of what you're getting, the experience, it does not, does not line up. Uh, let me know down in the comments. If you did like the video, hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Uh, and as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers, everybody.